now guys, Eagle Aquatics back here, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about a highly debated topic. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about this. How do I keep Gonophora so good in my tanks? It's always looking good, it's always open, I've been able to keep them for years. Uh, people always ask me why, because in the hobby, Gonophora is renowned for being hard to keep and having short lifespans. Um, so I, I've had mine for years. That red I've had for maybe a year. And then that green, I've had that thing for like three years. Um, they do phenomenal in my tanks. Uh, back in my BioCube, I had that green one. And then in the 60, I had the red and the green. They were both doing good in there and they're doing great in here too. Uh, so I'm gonna give you some of my tips and my experiences with this coral and what works for me and what I believe the requirements to keep this coral are. That's the thing, people always ask me, uh, what are your opinions? I'm gonna share all my secrets to keeping this stuff and show you guys what I do to make this coral thrive in my tanks. So the first thing I've noticed with this coral, like any coral with flat bases, like brain corals, wellsos, stuff like that, Ganapora has a more flat base. You want to be placing this guy in the sand bed, I've found. This coral loves being in the sand bed. It, it has a flat base, you can bury it in the sand. It does phenomenal on the bottom, which also means it doesn't need too much light. This coral is a, I would say, a more moderate to lower light coral in tanks. Uh, make sure when you have a reef tank, you of course have to have good lights and enough to make keep corals alive, but these guys don't require too much light and they do good under a wide range of like LEDs. I keep mine under Kessels and Z-Light, but fluorescence, uh, I've kept the green one in the BioCube with the fluorescence and all that kinds of stuff. Uh, it does just fine. So I found lower light coral. The, the next thing, a really, really big one is this coral does not like a lot of flow. You may see that green one uh, flying around in the wind and everything in the flow. If that guy, he likes a moderate amount of flow. That red one on the other hand, hates flow. He just barely any flow, really, really soft movement in the um, in the water column for that red Ganapora. Um, he does not like a lot of flow. I've found these corals do not like that much flow. If you blast them with too much flow, like, uh, brain corals and wellsos, they will start receding. A lot of the polyps will start receding and they'll, they'll start showing the skeleton. That means they're probably getting too much flow. They do not like flow. Like you can see my red right here. He does not like any flow. Just a gentle movement, enough to move the tentacles uh, to capture any food particles or anything, and that's it. You don't want to blast these guys at all. They hate it. They will not open. Anytime I move my hand around it or put the, like the flipper, the magnet cleaner around it, it will close up and not open for a couple minutes. But that's no big deal. Now, I wanna do a quick overview on this coral, like Ganapora, flower pot coral. You mostly see the green variants, those are the most common. Uh, a lot of people, they're not as um, expensive as the red. The red is very expensive. The green ones are, in my opinion, I've found them easier to care for and less demanding than the red for some reason, even though they're pretty much just the same species, uh, just different colors. But the red is definitely more expensive and the green I would recommend starting if you're trying to, if you want to keep down for it, start with the green. I would save a little bit of money, see how it does in your tank, follow these rules. And if you have success with that one, I would move up to red. Uh, red is just, this is one of the most wicked corals in my tank. Look at the colors on it. It's just insane. This thing lights up when the blue lights are on. It's super bright red. It's just crazy looking. Probably my favorite coral in the tank right now. And you can see it all. This stuff can grow in the right conditions very fast. You can see all the small little polyps coming up and uh, becoming longer ones. It, it, it grows like crazy too. So another topic I want to touch on about these guys, a secret I found to keep in these keep them in a low, uh, keep them somewhere in the tank up with low activity. Meaning like fish aren't gonna swim near it that much. Uh, stuff's not moving around, blowing it around or bothering it anywhere. I have it on the far right side of my tank by that tube anemone. 
because none of my fish or anything goes over by that guy because it will sting and eat them. So I put this guy over there and he's doing phenomenal. No fish go over there, no fish bother him, wave around in the current or anything. And he does really good. Now I used to have him on the left side of my tank where all my fish always congregate and everything. And this guy never opened, he never opened. Every once in a while when I'm feeding and everything, he'll start to open, but when the fish start congregating over there again, for some reason, he always closes up. Now that green one, he doesn't give a crap. He's always open. Uh, really nothing phases this guy, it's weird. He even likes that higher flow too, so. I guess it's a little bit different on the green. I found the green more easy to care for, like I've said. And uh, it, it's it's a really cool too. Now, yeah, like I said, place them on the bottom of the tank, lower light, lower flow, low fish activity areas. That's worked phenomenal for me. Um, I also found that these guys are very tolerant of higher nutrient levels in the tank. Now, before I lowered my phosphates in this tank down to 0.02, I used to run, I used to have them unknowingly at 0.25, which is way too high. Uh, for phosphate levels and these guys just did completely fine they did not care and they do like higher nitrates too uh, they don't seem to mind higher nutrient tanks my nitrates in this tank i'm still working on them there are about 20 right now but my phosphates are near zero they don't care either so they can tolerate a wide wide range of nutrient levels in the tank uh, they don't really care they're a pretty hardy coral once established in the tank and they could tolerate your higher nutrient levels. Um, now, a lot of people, when you buy these guys from like fish stores and everything, people always recommend feed them, feed them. They will not survive if you don't feed these corals. I guess you're supposed to feed them like Ghana Power or Ghana Power or something like that by Two Little Fishies. I'm sure they benefit from it, but I have, I rarely, if ever, feed my corals. I never feed these Ghana Poras, and they do phenomenal tank I never feed them I've been told by everybody when I buy these things you gotta feed these guys otherwise they're not gonna survive I found that completely false um, to each his own I mean if you feed your guy coral, great I mean it never hurts to feed coral the only way I look at it once you feed the coral it's just more nutrients in your tank you're just releasing more coral food microscopic things to break down and the nitrates and stuff I don't feed corals uh, at least not that often well, I maybe do it once a month, but they, I've found Ganapora do not need to be fed, at least in my tank. And at least in higher nutrient environments, I guess. Even though my nutrients, my phosphates are very low, the nitrates are still high, so they're probably benefiting from that a little bit, uh, getting their nutrients out of the water pump in the form of nitrates. Uh, but yeah, those are pretty much my secrets to keeping these. I'm gonna tell you guys more about this species. Now, you could just go with from the standard green, green gonopora, flower pot coral, they're also called. They're not gonna run you very expensive. They're, you can find them in a lot of places. They're a little bit harder to find now because that Indo, Indonesian ban is still going on. But the, the green ones, you could usually find them pretty easily. They're really easily propagated. They're not always as expensive. They're not very expensive. The red, on the other hand, they're a little bit harder to get, and they are very expensive. Like the red one I have in my tank, it's probably around a hundred dollar coral. By now, I I didn't pay that for it because I got it a while ago. It's going a lot, but they are definitely not cheap. And we do have or out there there are more like color variations of these corals like pretty crazy ones, they could go up the price really quick. Um, but they're easy to propagate also, and I just think they're awesome coral. They're great for any reef tank. Um, I'm just gonna go over what I, my opinions on keeping these and what has worked for me. I've had great success with these, and uh, if you're looking or losing down a port constantly, try following these rules, or try following these uh, opinions by me, I'll list them off again. So I like to keep these guys in a lower light part of the tank, in lower flow, and in a low fish activity uh, area where fish aren't swimming all around, snails aren't buying them or anything. Nothing's bothering these guys. They don't like to be bothered. Place them on the bottom, 
near the brain corals, the elegance corals, the buoy and the sand bed or bare bottom. Um, and I have found you don't have to feed them. The, they of course, like all corals, I guess they can kind of benefit from feeding, but I don't feed them and they do completely fine in here. They thrive in this tank. Uh, they do tolerate higher nutrients. I have phosphate low right now at around 0.02, but my nitrates are still pretty high being around 20, but I'm working on getting those down. These corals do not seem to care. So I, I would say they could go in ultra nutrient tanks to higher nutrient environments and they don't seem to care. I found them to be pretty hardy once established and if you treat them correctly and place them in the right spots. Um, so definitely, definitely uh, try one of these corals. If you're interested in getting one or have tried keeping them but have no success, try following some of these like opinions I've had, I've had great success with these corals. I'll follow some of these, maybe it'll work out for you. Um, definitely one of my favorite corals to keep and one of the coolest ones to watch with some of the coolest colors. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this answers a lot of your guys' questions. I know I get asked constantly about keeping this coral. So here are my uh, secrets I do to keep these guys successfully. And uh, hopefully it was interesting to you guys Make sure you go over to my Instagram page at Eagle Aquatics. No capses, no spaces, no anything. Just Eagle Aquatics. I am always posted on there. Every, every new thing I get, I post on there. So definitely go over there and uh, give me some suggestions for future videos. And I will see you guys next time.